Hi everybody, Callan Bentley here to um, give you the answer to the, uh, the challenge that I posted on Twitter the other day. I showed you a picture of this rock and then I asked you to evaluate this rock in terms of its various characteristics and, and tell me its geologic history in some number of steps. And I suggested that six would be a nice number of chapters in the, uh, the autobiography of this particular sample. So this is a piece of the Catoctin Formation. The Catoctin Formation is a prominent rock in the Blue Ridge Geological Province. It is a metabasalt, which means that it was erupted as mafic lava on Earth's surface and it cooled down to make uh, basaltic rock, but then later that was metamorphosed. Um, this particular sample is pretty cool because it has these big phenocrysts of feldspar in it. And these feldspar phenocrysts imply, with their, the discrepancy in their size relative to the fine grain matrix that surrounds them, it implies two stages of cooling for the, the molten rock that originally made um, this rock. So uh, there was an initial stage of cooling, slowly, and this implies that it happened underground. Then that was followed by a faster uh, phase of cooling resulting in the fine grain matrix that surrounds the feldspars. And that implies that it was above ground. So you would have magma, mafic magma, cooling slowly underground, forming nice big uh, crystals of plagioclase feldspar. And then those solid crystals were entrained in a flow of liquid magma that went up through a feeder dike up to Earth's surface and then erupted. And the rest of the lava chilled more rapidly making the fine grain texture that surrounds these big phenocrysts. So this porphyritic texture is evidence that in terms of the uh, protolith of this rock, um, there were two stages of cooling, one below ground, one above ground. If this were just an outcrop of porphyritic basalt, that would be the end of our story. Um, but this uh, particular rock has been through more stuff after that. And one of the, the next chapters has to do with the flakiness that you see. So this, this uh, rock is not equant. It's, uh, it's got a, a foliation that runs through it. And this foliation is uh, a metamorphic foliation that is largely defined by chlorite crystals. Um, so these chlorite crystals are too small to see in this particular sample, but they do give it its greenish tinge. And that is evidence of um, squeezing during regional metamorphism, during Appalachian mountain building. This is also the time that um, the, uh, the chlorite crystals grew in this rock, helping to define that foliation. And so there's evidence here of post-eruption mountain building that happened to this rock. So when the Appalachians were built, this rock attained its foliation and its green color. Several of you noted that the individual feldspars have uh, red coloring uh, running through uh, fractures that run through them, so they're broken along their cleavage planes and stained red. That staining, that alteration, probably also happened at this same time. And then um, the, that metamorphism, you know, our understanding of processes like that is that they need to take place at high temperatures and high pressures and therefore underground. So, you know, the story of this rock started underground with the formation of the feldspars. Then it came above ground with the eruption of the lava, all right? And then it must have gone underground again in order for the metamorphism to have taken place. But it's not still underground, right? I'm holding it in my hand. And so that implies that it must have come back up to Earth's surface at some point and been exposed at Earth's surface where a piece of it could be broken off. So there had to be uplift, and then there had to be weathering, physical or mechanical weathering, to break off this big chunk, all right? So those are additional steps in the story of this sample. And then the final uh, step, or the final chapter in the story, has to do with the shape of this sample, okay? So this cobble is rounded, uh, pretty strikingly rounded, especially when you look at it in this uh, dimension, and less so when you look at it in the side view. All right, so that rounding is evidence of transport down a stream, in this case, the Mormons River. The Mormons River is um, a river that drains the eastern slopes of the Blue Ridge. It has its headwaters in Shenandoah National Park, but thankfully for me, it flows out of the park and uh, flows into a big reservoir uh, for the city of Charlottesville in a little valley called Sugar Hollow. And that's where I collected this sample, okay? So it's not legal to collect rocks in the national park, 
But if you have a friendly river like the Mormons River that transports samples out of the park, then you can legitimately collect this stuff. Um, so this is, I think, a really spectacular sample um, because it shows these various, uh, you know, uh, different steps in its history. Um, it's also not uh, a common sort of rock to find. Um, there's plenty of Catoctin formation present as cobbles in the Mormons River, a lot of it amygdule bearing, but this is um, the only one that I've seen that has this beautiful original porphyritic texture. So it's a metavolcanic rock, it's a piece of the Catoctin formation, and it's a great little glimpse into Earth history.